399, we shall see the desert as the rose walking in the king's highway. Standing sing 399. I want to read some verses to you from John chapter 9. John chapter 9 and verse 1. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin this man or his parents that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. 
He went his way therefore and washed and came seeing. The neighbours therefore and they which before had seen him that he was blind said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes opened? And he answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes, and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed, and I received my sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? I know not. Amen. We know the Lord out of blessing to that reading from his own <coughs> precious truth. I think it's nearly 40 years ago since I spoke at the busman's. <laughs> Margaret had black hair then, and so had I. <laughs> <laughs> but it's marvelous to be back again tonight and just to share with you uh, something of the wonder of uh, the love of the Lord Jesus. Uh, this blind man was asked, How were your eyes open? You see, we are reminded in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 that the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel should shine in. And all of us, all of us from birth are blinded by the God of this world. So there must come a time in your experience when your eyes were opened. And so that's the challenge tonight. When and how were your eyes opened? So I want to tell you how my eyes were opened. Uh, I was brought up on Princess Street. And uh, it was very interesting because on the Sunday morning we used to go to Hill Street, Presbyterian. And godly Sunday school teachers told us there, it's wonderful knowing the catechism, but you need to know Christ. In the afternoon, we used to go to Linearn, where it was the Church of Ireland Sunday school. And the Sunday school teachers used to tell us there, it's wonderful to recite the Apostles' Creed, but you need to receive Christ. And then on a Wednesday night, we'd have gone to the Brethren. <laughs> and of course, you know what they told us, exactly the same that we needed the Lord Jesus. So whether it was in the Presbyterians or the Church of Ireland or the Brethren, the message was the same. And of course, uh, I believed that. Uh, I believed that none but Christ could satisfy. Uh, I believed that uh, nothing can wash away our sin uh, apart from the blood of Christ. I believed that the Lord Jesus died at the place called Calvary for me, for me. But I thought, oh, well, that's all right when I'm young, but uh, I'll wait till I'm old. And then I'll get saved. I'll wait till I'm old, and then I'll bow the knee and open my heart and trust the Lord Jesus. Now, I never thought for one minute that any desires for spiritual things could leave you. I never imagined my mind going that I couldn't understand or comprehend or grasp the message. I never thought for one minute that the Lord could give me up. I never thought that one day the Lord could come back or I could die suddenly. What about you tonight? Are you saved? Have you come to faith in Jesus? What is holding you up? The desire could leave you. Uh, mine could, could go, not the ability to grasp, to understand, to comprehend. Spirit could give you up. The Lord could come back again and death could come. And so the only thing I wanted to be was a footballer. And I remember one day I was playing for Sunnyside and this fellow came over and said, will you sign for Porter Down? Oh, I said I will. And I got the pen out to sign and I remember the fellow going into the, uh, the Baru, and uh, he was signing on, and he said to the wee girl, this pen doesn't work. She said, put your weight on it, so put down 10 stone 10. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I didn't do that. I signed my name, and here 
Eventually I was playing with Porta Down and uh, a group of us used to gather on a Sunday morning and go round the park. And one of the boys says, you've been picked to play for Ireland. He says, what at? He said, football. Hey, you're joking. Because I'd been playing the previous day, we'd got beat 11 to 1. <laughs> and uh, so I thought, how could it be? But here I was, chosen to play for Ireland uh, against Scotland at uh, junior level. And uh, so I went down to, to Windsor Park that day, and the first half I was hopeless, hopeless. Now, I was sitting in the corner, and nobody come and said, come on, son, there's only one way you can go, and that's up. You couldn't play another 45 minutes like that. But nobody come near me, because that's the world. When you're down, nobody wants to know. When you're down, you're left. You've got to apply a lone furrow. You've got to stew in your own juice. But the second half I went out, the ball hit me three times and I scored three goals <laughs> and I couldn't get into the pavilion, couldn't get in. It's amazing what 45 minutes does, but that's the world. When you're up, they all want to get on the bandwagon. But I've got a friend tonight, I hope he's your friend, a friend who loveth at all times. Whether you're ploughing the valley or on the mountain top, whether you're in the slough of despond or rejoicing, he loveth at all times, a friend who sticketh closer than a brother. Amazingly, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. I hope he's your friend tonight. I hope he's your forever friend. I hope he's your leave me never friend. I hope you put your hand in his hand. When I was a wee fella, I used to have a, an idol that I, I tried to copy. His name was Davy Cochran. He was from Porter Down. And I uh, tried to play like him and try to be a header <laughs> like him. And I knew all about him. But you know, if you'd come over from Porter Down and up the main street, he had to pass me by because I didn't know him. Even though I knew all about him. Even though I tried to be like him. I didn't know him. Was never introduced to him. What about my friend? Do you know him tonight? Tell me when were you introduced to him? When did you put your hand in his hand? And when did you really trust him as your saviour? So this was me on the road to stardom, so to think. And uh, played for Porter Down then, played on the amateur team. We won the British Amateur Championship. And uh, then I tell my grandchildren now that uh, all the English clubs were after me. Well, I'm sure there was two. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, sometimes we get evangelistic. <laughs> and... Uh, so uh, I decided to sign for Linfield and uh, they gave me 800 pounds for signing, for signing on. I thought I was a millionaire. Uh, we moved up salubrious up into the top end of Princess Street now. Uh, we ha had a living room now and we had a parlour. Oh, marvellous, marvellous. And I uh, bought a motor car for myself. You can only buy a pram now for 800 pounds, <laughs> never mind all that. But uh, uh, I thought I was a millionaire playing for Linfield and going up the town with a blazer and oh my, how proud, how proud I was. And uh, no thought of God. It was very interesting at that time the twins got saved. And uh, I'm sure they were praying for me, unknown to me, but I give them a hard time. If they stepped out of line, I was down on them. And uh, then, uh, uh, just coming towards the end of the first season, uh, I think that John Wesley White had come and there was a meeting in the High Street. And uh, I remember going to it, first time I'd been in church for a long time. Uh, apart from when we went away with Linfield, we always went to church on the Sunday morning in Port Rush. Uh, but one of the singers sang, uh, No One Cared For Me 
like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cared for me. But it didn't mean very much to me, but my, what a singer. And then uh, the first season went over. Uh, we won a few trophies. And then just at the start of the second season, uh, one Sunday night up the town it was raining. Sometimes it rains in Lurgan, doesn't it? <laughs> Somebody said twice a year, from January to June and from July to December. <laughs> but I don't believe that. And uh, so they said, come on down to the Baptist. I said, why? I said, there's a man there who's been a tramp and he's now preaching. So about eight of us trooped into the Baptist and sat away, as far away as we could. But we were always amazed how everybody wants to sit at the back in the church, so it took us a wee bit of a pushing and shoving to get in. And then Pastor Mullen came in, and my, my, he was dressed. Tremendous. I said to one of the boys, I thought you said this man was a tramp. He said, ah, but he's in the Baptist now. <laughs> I said, if I ever get saved, I'll be in the Baptist as well. And, but, uh, and my, he preached. Now, I had never heard anything like this. So excited, so enthusiastic, so zealous. I hope if you're saved tonight, you're excited. I hope you're enthusiastic. I hope you're zealous for the Lord Jesus as well. And it was the man's enthusiasm which gripped me. But as I was sitting listening, you see, the devil comes along and he says, now, this is not for you. This is for them good people. This is for them good people who come to church every Sunday. This, this is not for you, you see. I never thought that the God of this world comes to blind your mind. Comes to blind your mind to your acceptability. For we think I'm too bad or I'm not good enough. Uh, you see, he comes as an angel of light, uh, coming, to, coming to deceive you, coming to reveal to you that you're just not good enough to get saved or you're too bad to get saved. And yet, amazingly, this man, the Lord Jesus, this man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. How amazingly he came not to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. How marvelous that he died on the cross for sinners, for sinners unqualified, not specified what sort of a sinner you ought to be as long as you realize you're a sinner. You're a sinner. You have missed the mark. One day I was playing for Linfield and I got the ball. I was a centre forward. I nearly got a job with Cadbury's. They were looking for a soft centre. <laughs> and so uh, I, I got the ball and I thought, that I'm going to score and I hit it. Nearly hit the corner flag. And the crowd shouted, you're hopeless. You're hopeless. The way back to Porta Down, why did they ever sign you? You're hopeless. You're hopeless. And the next half, the ball came across, it headed it, hit the crossbar and went over. They all clapped. Hard lines, Billy. Good try, Billy. Wonderful. But Billy had missed. When I missed by a mile, how they scoffed and ridiculed. But when I was so very near, they applauded. That's what we do. The Alkies, the down and outs, the no hoopers, the no users. Point the finger. But the kind, considerate, loving and gracious we applaud, yet in the eyes of God puts us all in the same boat, tars us all with the same brush, calls us all by the same name, sinners, sinners. And yet that's who he came for. That's who he died for. For you and, and for me, for me. 
And this man, this man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. It's not a buffet. No, no, no. He takes time. Takes time with you. Takes time with me. And of course, uh, you're sitting in the meeting thinking, oh, could, uh, could God really forgive me? For, for, forgive me? And uh, the preacher assured us he has borne all our sins in his own body on the tree. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Then I thought, my, uh, how could I face the pals? Uh, what about uh, going down to Windsor and what about the crowd? And uh, then the preacher says, well... God by his spirit comes to dwell in you and gives you the strength and gives you the power. Gives you the ability to overcome, to overcome. And then you thought about the, I wonder could you keep following, could you keep going? Because that, that's a, a big problem. And uh, the preacher says, well, it's not the sheep who keep the shepherd. It's the shepherd who keeps the sheep. These were all these fears going through my head while Pastor Mullen was preaching. Uh, what's the thoughts that you have tonight? Are you saved by the grace of God? Have you come to that place of faith in our Lord Jesus and repentance toward God? If you come to that point where you have turned to God from your idols to serve the living and the true God, or are you still on the Broadway tonight leading to destruction, still without Christ, having no hope, and without God in the world? Now, I went out that night, still in my sin, but knowing, knowing, that God had come again to tap me on the shoulder. The next Sunday night it wasn't raining. And the boy says, where are you going? I said, I know where I'm going. I'm going down to hear that man again. And this time all the seats were taken apart from the front row. And that's where we were sitting. And the, the pastor came in again and every time I looked up I thought he was looking down at me. And uh, everything he said seemed to apply to me. And I said, somebody has told him. Somebody has told him I'm in the meeting. And here he's getting at me. Now, I didn't know the scripture where Isaiah says, I have called thee by name, you're mine. That he's very personal. He comes to make it very clear that he's on your track and on your trail. And all through the meeting, my, what a time I had, what a time I had. This fighting within, this war in my members, Paul describes. <coughs> Tell me, when did you have such an experience like that? When had you this fight within, this voice saying, yes, that's the way, and other voice saying, no, 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 not for you, not for you. And uh, Mr. Mullen used to say at the end of the meeting, will you come, will you do it now? It seemed like eternity until he said, Amen. And when I was going out, I said to one of my pals, the next time I go back there, I'm going to get saved the next time. And of course, uh, the devil was rubbing his hands. As long as it's the next time. As long as it's the next time. You see, if uh, the Bible says... Today is the accepted time. Now is, the, now is the day of salvation. The devil says tomorrow. As long as it's the next time. I wonder, I'm speaking to you tonight, and there was a time you were just like me, so near, almost there, within the reach of his hand, 
Uh, you heard him coming strangely near, but you said the next time. I want to tell you, the way of the transgressor is hard. Maybe in your case, a broken heart, a broken life, maybe a broken home. Looking back, if only you would have trusted him then, things would have been so different. Jesus said, how oft would I have gathered thee? As a hen gathereth her brood under her wings, and you would not, you would not now. Your house is left desolate. Oh, the tears you would never have shed. The troubles you would never have faced. The trials which would never have come your way if only, if only you would have trusted him. But amazingly, still he waits. Still he waits to be gracious. Still he waits to seek to save. Still he waits to forgive. Interesting enough, I never got back again. The devil ceased to that. And uh, it wasn't long until uh, I had forgotten everything uh, about that night. Forgotten everything uh, about thinking about him, coming to trust him. It was gone. That's what James says, that you go out through the door and immediately you forget what manner of person you are. Back to the old ways and the old haunts again. God, never in my thoughts. And then it, it, it was a September weekend. And uh, I went down to Windsor during the day and on the road back met one of my friends and said, hey, hey what about going back to the, the cinema in Belfast? Went back, it was the student prince, Mario Lanza. If you're nearly a hundred, you'll remember that. <laughs> and uh, he started singing. And then he started. I walk with God from this day on. This helping hand I lean upon. This is my prayer, my humble plea. May the Lord be ever with me. And sitting in the ritz that night, I realized that's the answer. That's the answer. I need to walk with God. I need to walk with God. The word of God is not bound. The word of God is not bound. On the Saturday night, three of my pals and myself were in Banbridge in a pub, sitting around the table drinking, drinking. You know what we were discussing? How to get saved. How to get saved. And here, Tuesday night, comes the answer. I'll walk with God. Now I didn't know that Amos says, how can two walk together except to be agreed? I didn't know I had to agree with God, but I knew I, I, I did. Agree what he said about me, a sinner. Agree what he said about his son, neither is there salvation in any other. Agree what he said, how I come to him to repent and to be converted. Not night at my own bedside. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. Lay down, thy weary one, lay down thy head upon my breast. I came to Jesus as I was weary and worn and sad. I found in him a resting place, and hallelujah, he has made me glad. Amen, amen. No fancy lights, no funny feelings, no trumpet voluntary. We're not saved by feelings, we're saved by faith. I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe he shed his blood for me. I believe he rose again to justify me. I believe that. In the light of what he said and what he did, I was saved. I went to work, I worked in the optical. And uh, I said, now, Jesus has no silent friends. You can't be a silent friend of Jesus, you know. He has no secret followers. You've got to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you'll be saved. 
So I thought, I'm going to have to tell these people that I'm saved. So I called over this fella. He was the news of the world. <laughs> and I said, I, I want you to promise me something. That you'll not tell another soul what I'm going to tell you. <laughs> oh, he said, oh, you're all right, Billy, I'll not tell it. I'll not tell a soul. He said, I got saved last night, way like a rocket. <laughs> and the people were going past me. They were looking at me going. A header. But you know something? They weren't pointing at my head. They were pointing at their own. They were the headers. Mm. They were the headers. Knowing the truth and neglecting it. Knowing the truth and rejecting it. I wonder are you a header tonight? Now, my time's almost gone. And uh, I'll maybe come back again sometime, maybe 40 years from tonight. <laughs> But I want to tell you something just uh, uh, in, in, in closing. There was a fellow called Sam. And Sam used to stand behind the goals and pour it down. And give me all the encouragement. Ma, he was such a supporter of me. Then I signed for Linfield. And used to come back to Shamrock Park. And here was the same Sam behind the goals, calling me all the names under the sun. And here, I was taking a mission in Portadown, and who should come in? Only Sam. And uh, he was going out, and uh, he said, Billy, I'm, I'm really sorry for some of the names I called you. Oh, I said, that's all right, Sam. He said, but Billy, I was wondering, could you give me one reason why you left Portadown? He said, Sam, I'll give you 800 reasons, <laughs> all pounds. Oh, he said, I said, but Sam, tell me, are, are you saved? I'd ask you what church you could. Are you saved? Do you know the Saviour? Are you born again? Uh, he said, I'm not. And here, Sam ended up in the hospital. And uh, I went along to see him. And uh, I said, Sam, I was playing in the final of the cup for Lurgan Tack. And I had scored in every round. And here was the final. And uh, Sam... We got a penalty kick, and before anybody could move, I said, I'll take it, I'll take it. So I put the ball down and came up and hit it over the bar. And I said, you know, Sam, I felt like running off to the referee and saying, hey, mister, mister, will you give me another chance? You know, Sammy would have said, you only get the one chance. And Sam grabbed me by the hand. He said, Billy, I mightn't get another chance. I want to trust the Lord Jesus. What about you tonight? That's how my eyes were opened. Happy day. Hallelujah. When Jesus washed my sins away. Tell me, are you a silent friend? Or are you a secret follower? I trust not. But you're really living for Jesus. Maybe tonight. Maybe tonight. You realize that you're not saved. Could, could, could we help you? Uh, don't go away in your sin, but turn to the Savior. Really trust him. Know this joy. Get your eyes open tonight. Have this personal encounter with the Lord Jesus. This powerful experience through the Lord Jesus. Give practical expression to him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight for your tremendous love, for the wonder of salvation, for the joy of sins forgiven. We praise you for the hope within us, even Christ in us, the hope of glory. And Father, maybe there's somebody here tonight not saved. We pray that you'll give them grace to take the step and to trust thy dear Son. In the quietness of their own heart, they'll make their response. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me. I'm sorry for my sin. Cleanse me and forgive me. Come into my heart and my life and make me a real Christian and help me from this night to live for you. Father, we pray, bless your word to every heart. Glorify your lovely name for the Saviour's sake and glory we do ask it. Amen. Amen. If you've made that wee decision then, let us know.
I'll come back and tell you the, the, the second half some other time. Amen. <laughs> Thank you very much, Pastor. Um, it really is very uh, heartwarming to know the way the Lord has led you. But stand to sing our closing hymn, 320. I hear thy welcome voice that calls me Lord to thee for cleansing in thy precious blood that flowed on Calvary. Three, two, oh, standing to sing.